Shalom, everyone. Uh, yesterday we suggested that before we go on to the other uh, blessings and prayers, we should just do an overview of, uh, of, the, of the blessings that we make in the morning. Um, and I brought from Sidur Binat Israel because, uh, first of all, it's written very properly and also gives you um, a little bit of explanation in Hebrew. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think it's been translated to English, but um, I, I think that we could go through them. And, and this is really how I do uh, how I do it every morning. So uh, I say all the all the blessings that we're going to learn today. I say them one after the other after going to the bathroom and washing my hands uh, three times. So we start with Baruch Atah Hashem Elokeinu Melech Olam Asher Kitchan Stavet Tzivan Alitzat Adaim which is um, a, a rabbinical mitzvah to wash our hands, but um, because Hashem commanded us to listen to the rabbis in commandment 417, I believe it is. Um, so we have to, every mitzvah that we do, even if it's only rabbinical, we say the Sharkin Charm Tzivano, on washing the hands. Then immediately we say Baruch, the, the blessing for Asher Yatsar, which is about our bodily functions, and I'll try to loosely translate it. Baruch Hashem, blessed are you, Hashem, sovereign of the universe. Asher Yatsar, Adam Echumahu, created and fashioned mankind with wisdom and created in him the Kavim, the Kavim, Chalulim, Chalulim things that are supposed to be open, things that are supposed to be closed. So, for example, our lungs uh, can't have any holes in them. Our heart can't have any holes in it. Um, but on the other hand, our intestines and, and kidneys, uh, there's two holes, one in the beginning and one at the end, in order to uh, get rid of the, the waste. Um, and so that's... So that is really a, a very wise creation. And we thank Hashem. It is very clear and known before your throne, before your holy throne, that if one of them shall be open, that is supposed to be closed, or one that is supposed to be open and closes. For example, the intestines then you'll have a blockage uh, and you won't be able to relieve yourself. You won't be able to have a bowel movement. Uh, we are not able to stand before you even for one hour. Um, and all you have to do is go into the hospital and, and see how true this really is. Uh, and then we end it with Baruch Hashem Rapecho Basar Mafilasot. Uh, blessed are you, Hashem, who heals all flesh and uh, does incredible and wondrous things because, like I said, we take it for granted that our um, our organs work the way they would do, but we have to thank Hashem for it. And we also say this blessing uh, after every time that we go to the bathroom and there's many, many sugulot that are related to it. The next blessing, we don't say other than in the morning, right after Asher uh, Tsar, And that's why it doesn't start with Baruch HaTashem, because it is connected to the previous blessing. So the rabbis told us that if there's two blessings that are connected to each other, uh, the second one does not need to begin with Baruch HaTashem. And so we talked about the body in the blessing of Asher Tsar. Now we're going to talk about the soul. This is the most fundamental belief about what we believe um, happens to the soul from before we are, we are born, from, be, from uh, during the time that we have it in our body, and even after it leaves our body. So, the soul that you have given uh, me and put inside me to Arahi, this is a, a play on words uh, from when Hashem breathed into Adam. It says, that it, it, almost like a mouth to mouth, 
And so that's how our neshama is given to us. Of course, there's pregnancy and all that, but <clears throat> the very first time <clears throat> there was no pregnancy. Adam was just a form of, of flesh and Hashem breathed into him the neshama. You created it, you formed it and, and fashioned it, and you um, um, blew it into me. And you also keep it inside me while I'm alive for 70, 80, 90, or whatever years I live. Um, the, the doctors have still not figured out how the soul leaves the body because um, most people don't die of suffocation. So we don't know really what, <laughs> how this neshama stays in us miraculously. And because we of this fundamental belief, and you are going to take it away from me when the time comes for me to pass away and to return to me in the future, and that is the resurrection of the dead. As long as the neshama is in me, I am going to thank you. Uh, Israel Tal uh, basically changed the Nusach from Mode and Moda for, for women because that's more appropriate, but all the other words are uh, gender neutral. So we thank you, Hashem, my God, and the God of my forefathers, Ribonko Amasim, Master of all deeds, Adonko and Shemot, the Lord of all uh, souls, and blessed are you, Hashem, and Machazir and Shemot, Garanitim. Blessed are you, Hashem, who resurrects the dead. And so that is how we start our morning with that very fundamental belief. Then we go on to the Birkot of Torah. The first blessing is, again, the, mit the blessing of mitzvot, just like I take a lulav or I, take, or I light the Hanukkah candles or I wash my hands. Baruch Hashem, Torah. You have commanded us to learn the Torah. And that's in the parasha of the Shema a few times. It also says that you should teach it to your children. Even if you don't have children, you should teach it to your nieces and nephews uh, or other people. And that's how we are osek we, we We manage to uh, deal ourselves with the words of Torah. Then we have a request. We have a request that Hashem will make the words of Torah sweet in our mouths and in the mouths of all of our children and the children of our children and the children of all the people of Israel. And, and may we all be Yodei Shemecha, which is a very, very high level of knowing Hashem's um, essence. Uh, and, and Rambam suggests that if I knew Hashem, I would be Hashem. So it's just uh, aspiration. And we want to learn your Torah, Lishma, which means for its sake, not for us to become rabbis or leaders or know-it-all, any other kind of title. And we end this request with, Blessed are you Hashem who teaches Torah to the people of Israel. Then we say the bracha that um, Mordechai asked me about yesterday. Um, about the blessing before the Torah reading. This is the same blessing that we make. Hashem chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Hashem, who gave us the Torah. I'm going to skip uh, the next few paragraphs. Uh, it talks about the, 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 the very quick learnings of Torah, the priestly blessings, and the blessing, uh, and the Mishnah, talks about the reward in the next world and we'll go to page 25 where it talks where it starts the, the new blessing. I think today we might be a little bit over 10 minutes but bear with me. So the first blessing is Baruch Hashem which is that since you gave even the rooster the wisdom to know when is day and when is night then we thank you for giving us a brain that which is way higher and able to differentiate between a lot more things than the rooster, but 
the way the rabbis wanted us to say it is because uh, every human is just a little bit over a rooster, and so everybody can say this blessing. Even somebody who is uh, mentally incapacitated or has mental problems still has um, certain knowledge to know what is right and what is wrong. Um, it's a whole philosophical question if it happened only because of the eating from the fruit of the tree of knowledge or that was the plan all along. But just the idea that we have to thank Hashem for giving us um, that knowledge. And then we have um, three blessings which we call the uniqueness blessings, uh, which differentiate us <clears throat> from other people. So the Nusach Sfarad here is Shalom um, Asani Goy, that he that Hashem has not made me a non-Jew and in the fit and feminine, and Shalom Asani Aved, that he's that Hashem has not fashioned me to be a slave and only a servant or slave of Hashem, and uh, for a woman maid servant, and the last which we discussed uh, last week was Shalom Asani Isha that Hashem did not make me a woman, and a woman says, Shasana Kirtsono will fashion me according to God's will. And and all those three are basically thanking Hashem for the different levels of keeping the mitzvot. It's not degrading at all. It's not about uh, putting down non-Jews, slaves, or women. It's just about, I, I am glad that I can keep certain mitzvot that the other three categories can't. And then we thank Hashem for Pukeach Ivrim, which means that my eyes are able to see. Malbisha Rumim, that I'm able to have clothing. Matira Surim, that uh, it, there's two different interpretations. One interpretation is that my uh, limbs were as if they were tied up when I was sleeping. The other one is that I'm not a prisoner uh, in prison. And... And that's why there's a discussion about prisoners saying or not saying this blessing. As far as I know today, if you're in a in a modern country where um, the warden can't just kill you just because they they feel like it, um, then you are in a prison, but you are still still can be free in, in some way. Um, David, you and I talked about this. Um, Zokef Kefufim is who, who allows me to be standing up. Um, most animals, maybe only monkeys and others, uh, uh, um, but very few animals are able to stand up. And so we thank Hashem for the ability to stand up on our two feet. Um, Roka Al-Tzalamayim is the idea of separating the dry land from the wet land. From from the, the wetness, right? Nobody can walk on water. Machinitsa de Gaver is that I'm able to actually use my legs to walk. Shasade Kortsoki, again about the legs, is referring to the shoes. And I mentioned earlier about Abraham Lincoln saying that uh, somebody, that he felt sorry for somebody who uh, didn't have shoes, but then he saw somebody who didn't have legs. So he understood that we have to have gratitude even for that. The next two blessings, according to most commentaries, are about the tefillin of the arm, Ozeri Sarebet Bura, and Ozeri Sarebet Tifara, the tefillin of the head. And Baruch that even though I'm waking up and I still am a little bit uh, drowsy or, or, not, or not able to function properly, that Hashem gives me the strength to get up and start doing things. And last but not least, we say, that Hashem removes those uh, imaginary scales from my eyes and, and, and sleepness from my eyebrows um, or, or eyelids, and basically being able to start functioning uh, for the day. And that's why we end with a Yehiratzon, that basically asks Hashem to help us go through the day uh, without any challenges uh, or problems. 
So questions, comments, criticisms? So um, I teach 